Hey everybody, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In today's episode, we're going to talk about what I call the blue binder. It's something I put together years ago to help my wife and I suppose ultimately my family understand our finances and even manage our investments should I become disabled or die, something I just generally describe as getting hit by a bus. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to walk through the template that I've created just for you guys uh, it, it, that matches pretty much what I have done. By the way, this is my actual blue binder, which that's why I call it the blue binder. It sounds better than the death binder or the in case of death binder, which actually are things. If you Google it, you'll get information on this sort of thing. So that's what we're going to cover today. And uh, you can get uh, the template I'm going to show you is right here. We're going to walk through this template in today's video. Uh, you can get a copy of this along with a simple uh, net worth uh, sort of balance sheet statement in, in Google Sheets. You can get both of these if you'd like them. Of course, you can make your own if you prefer. Uh, and uh, so there'll be a link below this video. It will take you to this page where you put in your name and, and email. This is a sign up to my weekly newsletter. But you have to use this specific one, even if you're already subscribed to the newsletter. What this one will do after you get an email to confirm your subscription, uh, about a minute later, you'll get another email that will give you links to both of, of these uh, documents. You'll be asked if you want to create a copy. And that's very important. I'm not giving this actual template because I, I don't want anyone to change it. So you'll be able to create your own copy and you'll be the only one that has access to it. I won't have access to your copy. Only you and anyone else you decide to share it with. All right, so that's how you can get a copy of all of this. So let's start walking through the template. And I, I will say, first of all, my, my, two, my, my two main goals when I created my first version of the Blue Binder, oh, eight or 10 years ago, was to one, let my wife, there's really three goals, make sure she understood what we have, where all our investments are located and our, our, our accounts. Um, two, that she could have some sense of, of how to deal with it. Because in our family, I manage all the investments. She really doesn't have an interest in doing that. So help her to understand how she could manage them if I were unable to. And the third thing, and I think this is just as important, we talk about this, you know, hopefully at least once a year. I give her the binder. She reads through it. She asks questions. Sometimes we just go to a coffee shop. I think that's really important. So that's sort of the, the, my, uh, the purpose behind, again, what I call the blue binder. All right, enough chit chat. Let's get to it. So I start with, and, and some of this is just for the purpose of the template to sort of explain to you what, what, what I'm doing. But the first thing I have is sort of a table of contents, which is what you're, you're seeing here. You'll notice, by the way, that there are links. Um, these are links to the various sections that you can also see down the left-hand sidebar. So if we were to click all oh, the net worth statement, it drops us right down. We'll come to that in a bit. Um, these links are easy to create, uh, just so you know. Uh, all you do is what you want to link to, like the start here, uh, you'll notice, let me show you, this is a heading two. You could pick any heading one, two, three. But once you define something as a heading, you can then link to it very easily. All you would do is highlight, you know, whatever you wanted, wherever you wanted to create the link, come up here and hit the link button. And then you can see down here, right here, um, all the different headings I've created, you can just pick one. We'll just pick net worth statement. Now it's linked to the net worth statement. I don't want that, so I'm going to get rid of it. So that's how you create a link, which can be very helpful if you want to either modify this or create one on your own. All right, so uh, the start here is actually a new part of the template that I have not fully developed for myself, let alone for this template. But uh, the idea is basically, what should my wife, or if, if we were to both uh, say become disabled or, or die, our, our family, what should they worry about say in the first roughly uh, 30 days? And so I've just started to sketch out things that I want to in eventually include in here. Uh, your list of course may be different, but who are the primary contacts that they should re reach out to first? In the case of my wife, particularly now that we don't have regular jobs, how does she get cash? And um, this is sort of twofold that I'm in the process of developing. And by the way, it's another reason that I'm giving this out through the sign up to the newsletter, because as I make changes to this, I'll be notifying those of you who have downloaded it. Hey, there's a new version of this template. And this right here is going to be a big part of my, my next iteration, because it's going to be both where do you get money for the first 30 days? But then beyond that, how do you get money from our investments? How do you create a retirement paycheck? You know, where do you take money from first? Which accounts? 
So I'm working on that now, so I will have an update to that. Uh, you know, any bills, uh, loans that need immediate attention, access to key documents. Um, the other thing I I'm putting in here, and I've talked to my wife about this, things not to worry about in the first 30 days. And the big one for me is our investments. I, one thing I've told my wife is, you can, you can ignore how our investments, you don't have to make any changes. Don't think, you know, oh my goodness, now I'm responsible for this. I got to go do something. You could go a year or two and do nothing. I know there's rebalancing, but I'd much prefer her to just have the peace of mind that she, she's got time to figure it out. She's got time to talk to people, seek advice if she wants to. Don't feel like there's this great big responsibility on your shoulders in the first 30 days or heck, even the first six months or a year. You can just leave the investments where they are. Of course, that depends on where your investments are. Ours are primarily low cost index funds. For active traders that, you know, you may not be able to, to say that, but for us, uh, she can just leave them alone. So the start here page is kind of uh, a work in, in progress, but I think it's really, really important. All right, the next section are key contacts. And uh, this, you know, in, in, in my actual version of this for my wife, you know, I have of course their name, their address, their firm, their email, their website. You know, if you have an, a trust and estates lawyer who does your taxes, if you have financial planners, um, any contacts at, you know, Vanguard or Fidelity or Schwab or wherever you have your investments. Um, employment, if you're still working the nine to five, you know, who does your spouse or family member or significant other need to contact? Business contacts, and that's important for me. Uh, so I have some people that she can, can reach out to who can help her uh, sort of transition into sort of running the business that, that I have. Uh, any insurance agents or insurance contacts are really, really important. So uh, you may have others, and I'm just focused on the financial aspect of this. You may have people that, you know, contacts for someone to take care of your pets, right? I mean, it can get very, very sort of down to earth and practical. Uh, and so feel free, of course, to add to this. Uh, but those are the primary areas. And then I have a net worth statement. This is uh, the same thing that I've got in, in Google Sheets here. You'll get links to both of these if you download uh, the template, but uh, it doesn't really work great in Google Docs, but I've put it in here just to keep it all in one place. And I've kept it simple. Of course, you can change this, but I kind of like the idea of distinguishing between the types of retirement accounts. And for us, I include HSAs in there. You may separate those out depending on your circumstances. And then for taxable accounts, I distinguish between cash held mainly at banks uh, and investments. If you have a, if you own a home or other real estate, you could put it here. And then I have a place for any liabilities that you might have. And, and then your net worth. And this is just to kind of give uh, your loved ones sort of a, a bird's eye view of, of your, your, your assets and, and your liabilities. And then what I do from here is start to dig down into the details. So the way I set this up for the template, I start with bank accounts, the bank name, the type. Um, you can have a payable on death with, with accounts like this. So if you have a, uh, someone that's going to sort of um, own this account, should you, or if you're married, both of you die, it avoids a probate. And the balance, and I, I tend, tend to only update this once a year, but you could, of course, do that more frequently if you want. And then, um, so of course, this is obviously the, elect the electronic version uh, of the binder. In the actual physical blue binder, I keep a recent bank statement. And again, I think updating it just once a year is fine, but of course you could do that more frequently. Uh, and you may have any number of bank accounts, but uh, they would go here. All right. Then I go to retirement accounts and, you know, retirement accounts are hold, held individually. So I've got to have, for, in my case, uh, some, you know, the list of mine and then the list of, of my wife's and you know, I have sort of the basic information. I think it's really important to, to, to indicate who the beneficiary is. And one of the reasons is to make sure you've actually named a beneficiary. And uh, if you haven't, or you're not sure, you need to, you need to check. It could be, a, in some cases, it can be a trust. If, if, if you're married, I think for most people, you'd want it to be the spouse because they get special tax considerations if you inherit, say, an IRA as a spouse, but again, uh, that can vary depending on your circumstances and what you, what you want to do. But I do think indicating the beneficiary is important. And then the other thing I do, you see it here, I just give a brief description of the difference between a traditional retirement account and a Roth retirement account. Something that I think my wife you know, generally understands, but you know, she doesn't, unlike you and me, she doesn't spend her day, you know, figuring all this stuff out. So 
Uh, I try to give a little bit of guidance and you know you can of course play with this language but you'll see it there it describes both of these accounts uh, account types I should say then I have a place for pensions and annuities I've personally not done much with this because we don't have either but I know a lot of people do and you know uh, there are many many kinds of annuities different kinds of pensions so the amount of detail you provide is just going to vary depending on the type of accounts and one thing I should add I'll go back up to retirement accounts for a second. In the physical blue binder, I do keep statements, again, annual, usually of all of the accounts. And if I had pensions and annuities, I would do uh, the, same, the same thing. You could keep them electronically, like in, in, in the cloud, but I just am uncomfortable putting those kinds of documents in the cloud. So I just keep a physical uh, copy. All right, and then we get to brokerage accounts. Basically, the same idea. Uh, I do, unlike a retirement account, how they're owned is important. Is it individual? Is it joint? Again, you may have uh, someone you've named as the beneficiary. Uh, they may not call it that, but that's basically the idea. Um, and, uh, and by the way, you'll notice I have sources here, like the different types of joint accounts. There's a source. I think this is Schwab. Yeah. I thought there was a good Schwab article. And, and so I've linked to it. And that's the other thing. I'll do updates from this time, from time to time. Uh, with just adding resources that I think are useful and linking to them in this document for you. And again, if you've signed up and downloaded the template, I'll send you out an email when I do that. All right. And then we have HSA accounts. Uh, pretty straightforward. The one thing I would add, it's right here. Uh, I save our receipts, medical receipts, um, and, and, and then we can take money out from the HSA tax-free anytime we want, even 20 years from now. And it occurred to me a while back, my wife would have no idea that I even do that, let alone uh, where those receipts are. And certainly uh, extended family, you know, if we should both pass away, would, ha would have no idea. So I put it here. If you save them in, say, the cloud, you could link to it uh, if that's what you do, or if it's a physical um, uh, folder or whatever, you just, you know, put in here, you know, it's in the filing cabinet in the basement or, or wherever you keep them, if that's what you do. And then, of course, I would add... Uh, HSA statements to the, to the blue binder. All right. Uh, next is real estate. And um, again, pretty straightforward. If you are a real estate investor, this could get could be a whole binder in and of itself, depending on how much real estate you own. We only own our home and that's it. So, you know, you're going to obviously have to vary this based on your circumstances. But one thing I would mention, I do think it's important to pull together all of the relevant documentation. I've listed what I think are some of the key categories. I'm sure there could be others that you would want to add here. And you could keep all of this in the bind, your blue binder. You could keep them in a folder in the filing cabinet and just indicate the location in the blue binder. Uh, but this is information uh, that your loved ones will need, I think, to understand uh, your, your property. All right, the next one is government benefits. One of the things I would recommend is that you get a copy of your social security statement. I've got a link here where you can go. Let's just follow that link briefly. Here it is. You can sign in, you can download your social security statement. It includes, by the way, potentially survivor benefits, something that a spouse might, might not even know uh, is available. So uh, you could put that information here. You could include a copy of your social uh, security statement in the blue binder. Also include a copy uh, of your spouse's or significant other um, there. And then you may have other government benefits, depending on your circumstances, that you'd want to detailed here. We, we do not, uh, so it's not a big part of our binder, but uh, there's a place for it. All right. Uh, vehicles, kind of the same pretty basic thing, uh, and this is not something that I view as a high priority for us, but you know, you can put your information here. Um, uh, one thing I will show you, I keep all of the debts in a separate section. You can see it down here. And let's actually just drop to the debts for a second. Let's imagine um, you have a car loan. So we'll just say car loan, lender, and it's a car loan, right? And you have the balance, whatever it is, $5,000. We can make it look pretty. There we go. And the interest rate, monthly payment, and so on. And you could have a statement for all your debts, right? We're going to come to that in a minute. I decided to keep this all in one location rather than putting, say, mortgages up with real estate and car loans here with vehicles. But... You can link to those, much like I showed you creating the link uh, before, but the way you would do it is a little different. So what you would do is highlight what, what you want to link to, and we want to create a bookmark. And it's under insert, you're going to go all the way down, here it is, bookmark. So I've just created a bookmark. 
And then I can link to that bookmark from anywhere in this document. So I go back up to vehicles um, and let's assume I've got, I'll just highlight this. We've got a, a, a car loan, I'll try that again. And I can hit this button here and it's gonna come up to headings. And if you go all the way down, oh, there's our bookmark, car loan lender, there we go. And now if we click on this link, it takes us to that debt. So you could do that if you wanna kind of get fancy. In any event, here are the vehicles. You can include location of all of the relevant documents, um, the title to the car, and, and, and so on here. Businesses is a pretty significant uh, a part of my binder because of the business I own. Of course, you may not own a business, but it's gonna be very, very highly specific. I will tell you, one of the things that I did, I'm in the sort of online blogging, YouTubing business. So one of the things I did was sort of talk about what my wife needs to be concerned about and what she doesn't. So for example, the YouTube channel doesn't have to think about it. It's just gonna sit out there. Maybe you guys will watch some, <laughs> some videos down, down the road. Um, uh, it'll make a little bit of money. It'll go to the business bank account, doesn't have to do anything. The websites on the other hand might need a little of attention and so I reached out to some other bloggers that I've known for more than a decade that I trust, and they've agreed that I can give my wife or, or family members their contact information. I picked four of them. And so it's in my blue binder. Here are four people you can reach out to. They're not gonna probably turn it, start running the business, but they can help you understand what needs to be done. So that might be something you think about. But depending on whether you own a business, how complex it is, that part of the binder could be pretty significant. It's just in the template, there's really not much to say because it's so specific to each business. All right, then we have all, all the debts that you might have. Um, and I, I would just like um, brokerage accounts and bank accounts, I would include in the blue binder um, documents, maybe the most recent statement uh, for each debt. All right, the next thing I have, and this sort of gets into my investment philosophy, and, and I've put sort of a version of what I have in my blue binder here. Obviously, this may not work for you at all, um, or, or you might use it and some of you might might find it helpful. But I've just sort of walked through some things to, for my wife or family members to think about. This is something I'm sort of constantly tinkering with. I think this is reasonably good, but I, there's a lot of things I'd like to do about it, uh, to, to add to it. Um, one thing I put in here, I, I, a couple of things. I've suggested that she reach out to Vanguard if she wants help. I, I, that may change. I like Vanguard's advisory services. 30 basis points is certainly... Uh, inexpensive. I do wonder if she would benefit from someone she could sit down, you know, at a desk face to face. So I'm looking into that. So for me, this may change, but uh, there's that. And then I do talk about fear and, you know, market crashing and all the different things that, um, you know, we've been through as a country and, you know, how markets have survived. But I think that can be helpful. So uh, if you download the template, you'll see this and, and you can use it uh, if it's helpful to you. And then here I put copies of all of these documents in the blue binder. And then I, for the originals, I simply indicate where they're located. They may be in a safe deposit bo box for you. Maybe they're with your lawyer. Maybe they're in a filing cabinet at your home. Uh, but you want all of uh, your, your in, sort of end of life documents, medical directives, all that sort of thing in one place. Uh, then I have insurance policies, pretty straightforward. One of the things that I think is critical is that it's often important to uh, tell folks in the blue binder things you don't have. So in our case, we don't have life insurance. We don't need it. So I've put that in the blue binder and you can see I've actually got a note here for that purpose. Because what I don't want are family members wondering, boy, do they have life insurance? Now we gotta try to hunt, are we missing something? And so if you don't have something that kind of most people might think you, you would, I think it's worth noting that somewhere in the blue binder, all right? All right, passwords, this is always a tricky one. Um, my approach generally, let me, before we get to the template, so one of the things I don't do, and in fact, here's a book that you might wanna consider. I'll put a link to this below the video. It's called Getting It All Together. This is sort of like, uh, you know, what I've put together for, for you in the template. It has sections that I don't have, like, like with pets and things like that. So you might find this useful. But one of the things that it recommends is that you put passwords to financial accounts down somewhere. And I don't do that. And I've talked to my wife about this. I don't think it's necessary. She doesn't need uh, online access to my IRA at, at, at some, um, you know, at Vanguard. That's, that's not where I have them. But if I did, she doesn't need that because the way it's going to work is 
she's going to reach out to wherever my retirement accounts are. She's going to have a death certificate if I've, uh, if I've, if I've died. And they're going to uh, basically transfer those accounts into her account. So uh, there's no reason to risk some security issue by you know, putting in a, in, a, in a Google Doc or even a blue binder um, passwords to all your financial accounts. The other thing is if you change them, which you should do regularly, then you've got to think about, oh, wait a minute, have I updated the blue binder with my new 16 digit password? It's, it's a hassle. And you really should have two factor authentication enabled. And if you do that, having the password ain't gonna get someone into your account. So back to my template, this is my approach. You may try a different approach. We use a password manager. I think two of the good ones are LastPass and 1Password. They both have emergency access capability. And so I've added uh, my wife, and so she can ask them for um, access. And the way it works is you can set up a, 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 a time delay if you want. So you can say, okay, if, if, if this person asks, give them immediate access. Or no, wait, notify me first and wait three hours, or wait two days, or wait a week. Uh, you can set it up you know, pretty much however you want. And I find that to be extremely uh, useful. Uh, again, though, um, the passwords in and of themselves might not help if you've got two-factor authentication set up, which I do, including on things like my email. Now, if you use Gmail, there's um, a, a handy feature. It's called Inactive Account Manager. And let me, I'll show you the link. Here it is. You can set up... Uh, uh, a system where if you're inactive for some period of time and you can set that, Google will reach out to you. Hey, you've been inactive for a while. What's going on? And if enough time passes, they will eventually give access to whomever you've identified. And so I use that. I think it's very handy. But this is basically how I manage our, our passwords. Probably the most significant passwords would be Again, not to financial accounts. She can handle that without the passwords or family members can. It's email and I've handled it through Google's inactive account manager and maybe social media. Uh, but again, if you've got all your passwords saved in a password manager uh, and then you give emergency access to your loved ones, that should handle it. Um, so there you go, that's kind of how I, I handle passwords. You may take a different approach um, and I've talked about an, another approach here that I don't like. Uh, but I know this is a, an issue, uh, an important issue, so you want to think about what is best for you and your family. All right, the next one is something I'm just starting this year, and I actually haven't even finished the first one, but I want to do annual letters to my wife and, 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 and to our children that I'll actually give them, you know, every year. Here's the letter. I kind of think of it like Warren Buffett's letter to the Berkshire Hathaway shareholders, and um, I'll have different letters for my wife and children. For my wife, I'll go over our finances, you know, our income and expenses for the prior year, and just maybe try to kind of give some insight into what I'm thinking about our investments and our money. Uh, for, the, for the kids, the same thing, except I won't go into details on our finances, but just talking about investing, maybe talk about their investments. And then I'll just keep those letters in the blue binder. And, you know, hopefully if I'm on this rock a long time and they add up over time, it'll be a way to help sort of educate them. Uh, it'll give them something to go back and read later um, and so it takes a little bit of effort. I'm still working on the one for what would be 2021, and it's already June 2022, so I'm a little behind. Uh, but I think that's uh, I think that could be really useful and, and helpful. All right, two more sections: employment. And here uh, you can see it's blank. Uh, I'm not em employed other than, my, other than my own business. But you could put information here of things that you know your your, your loved ones will, will need to know. I will mention one of them. You may have free, some amount of free life insurance through your employer. Now, that should be over here in insurance policies, right? Uh, but you may have information here uh, beyond the contacts, you know, who they should contact, any other information on benefits that, that may be available uh, to uh, your significant other or family, depending on, on where you work. Um, or there may be very little to put here, but I, I did think I did want a, pl a placeholder uh, for information about your employment. And then the last one is taxes. Again, kind of a blank template. I guess it's not even a template, really. Just a blank page with four taxes on the top. But the idea here is if, if there's any specific information that your loved ones need about your taxes, um, in terms of contacts, I've already got that in the key contact section. 
You might include in your binder your last tax return if you're so inclined to do so. If you have someone that prepares your taxes, then they should have copies. What you might have in, in the blue binder for taxes is nothing more than, hey, here's where I keep all our tax information. Here's the supporting material for our last three years uh, of tax returns. And you'll find it wherever, in the filing cabinet, in the basement, or wherever you keep it. So you want a placeholder for that. So there you go. That's sort of at a, a high level, I guess, my template. I will be adding to this. As I already mentioned, there are things that I want to add to it. Um, but I think this turned out pretty good. I'm happy with it. Hopefully, you'll find it uh, useful. Uh, again, you can download a copy of this, as I mentioned, following uh, the link below the video. One thing I'm going to ask of you, if you think of other things that you think should be in here, either leave a comment to this video, or if you sign up and get the template, just reply to the email you get, because I read all the replies, and let me know. You know, Maybe I've, uh, there's some other sections I should add to this or other resources I should add to it. Uh, if I think they're going to be useful to a lot of people, absolutely would be happy to do it. There you go. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.